Algebra 2, end of course assessment review. So after you've taken your pretest um, and then scored it with the answer report, as you go through and score it, mark each problem on your pretest with the following markings. So put a star if you attempted the problem and got it right. Then put a square if you thought you knew how to do the problem, attempted it, but got it wrong. Put a question mark on the ones that you remember that you weren't sure how to work but guessed, and then a slash if you didn't have time to even attempt it. So pause the video and do that, and then as you redo the review material this week, this will help you know what you need to focus on. Okay, now how, here's how to use the PowerPoint, which this video is based on. Um, so you may be just looking at the PowerPoint or watching this video. Um, you're going to review the formula sheet that will come up next. Take a minute to go through the entire presentation and get an idea of what it looks like. It has the following sections. So day one, we're looking at reviewing systems, complex numbers, and functions. Day two, we're looking at radicals, rational exponents, and polynomials. Day three, performance event and logarithms, and day four, rational statistics and reading a table. Most slides have concept numbers listed at the bottom corner and video links um, as references for more help. Don't forget your test taking strategies that you've learned for standardized tests. And then if you complete the assigned review for the day, move on to the next day's review. Now in this video, I'm only going to cover day one, but since this is the first day, I wanted to preview just this beginning information. So here's the reference sheet. You should have a paper copy, and when you take the actual EOC, you'll have a paper copy and have access to an online copy. So here we go with systems, complex numbers, and functions. You'll need your, your notes packet out and also your pretest because we're going to go back and forth between these problems, or sorry, between these packets. So the first thing is let's look at pretest problem number 14. So turn in your pretest packet to this and look at what you did, um, or if you haven't, didn't get a chance to work it or maybe didn't understand it, um, you can do it with me now. So <clears throat> you want to look at each equation that you need to graph and decide its type and your strategy to graph it. You want to graph as many points as are needed to clearly see the points of intersection since what we're trying to do is find where these graphs intersect. For linear graphs, use slope intercept. For quadratic, find the vertex and two points. For other graphs, look for transformations and key points like zeros. And do not forget to label the axes and the scale. So of our two equations here, I notice that the first one is quadratic. So I'm going to pick out my vertex using hk, and then I'm going to make a, a table of values around that vertex. Now I'm going to look at my second equation, which I recognize as a line. I'm going to pick out my slope and my y-intercept and make note of those. Now I'm going to get my graph space ready. I'm labeling my axes and my scale. And now I have graphed in red the line, so you can see that I graphed the y-intercept and the slope, and I did many points, and I also graphed my quadratic points. I can see clearly where these intersect. So I'm going to make note, and this would be what I need to indicate on my graph, my points of intersection, which are my solutions. All right, now turn to number 22 in your pretest. So given the system of inequalities below, draw a line from the coordinate points into the column that best represents each pair. So is it a solution or not? Now the way that I have mine set up, and maybe yours as well, it's not going to easily draw lines. So instead, we're just going to list those ordered pairs in the proper column. So if it is a solution or if it's not. So you want to plug each point into the inequalities to see if you have two true statements. If you have two true statements, then it's a solution. But if you don't, it is not a solution. So our first point, 0, 0. When I plug it into my first inequality, I get 0 is greater than negative 2, which is true. And my second one, 
I get zero is less than one, which is also true. So zero, zero is a solution. So now let's plug in the point zero, one. I get one is greater than or equal to negative two, which is tri two, sorry, true. But then I get one is less than one, which is not true. So the point zero, one goes into not a solution category. Now the point zero, negative two, I get negative two is greater than or equal to negative two, which is true and negative two is less than positive one. So that is a solution. The point one zero, I get zero is greater than or equal to negative two, which is true, and zero is less than zero, which is not true. So that point one zero is not a solution. Notice that the points have to work in both of the inequalities to be a solution. And if they work, I put a check mark. So the point one, one does not work in the second inequality because one is not less than one. And now the point negative three, zero in pink. So I get zero is greater than or equal to negative two and, sorry, so six minus two is four. Zero is greater than or equal to four and that is not true. <laughs> All right, and now finally, the point negative three, four, I get four is greater than or equal to four, and then four is less than four, which is not true. So we have two solutions and four that are not solutions. All right, now go to your next, uh, sorry, your notes packet, and let's look at um, this extra problem practice. So we're gonna solve this system algebraically. So the hint is to plug the value of the second equation, what y equals negative x plus one, into the first equation for y, and then solve the resulting quadratic using factoring. <clears throat> so I'm showing what we're gonna plug in, and now I'm gonna plug that in. So I have one equation essentially equal to the other, and then I'm gonna solve, get everything in standard form, and factor. So my factors are three and negative one, and you can see right here that I made a mistake. See if you see my mistake. Now what I did is I went ahead and worked it with these. So I solved for x, I got my x values, plugged them in, and got my y values. Then I checked those in my mind, and I plugged them back into my equations, and I realized that I did not get true statements. So I found my error here. When I wrote my factors, I wrote them incorrectly. So you can do that too on your test. You have as much time as you need. It is This is not a time test. So every time you get a solution, you can always go back and check. So our solutions are negative three, plugging that in for x, you get four for y, and positive one, plugging that in for x, you get zero for y, and both of those points check in both equations. Now continuing looking at your notes packet. So we've got some information on complex numbers. So a complex number is a non-real number that has the imaginary unit. So remember that the imaginary lowercase i equals the square root of negative one and i squared equals negative one. Anytime you have i squared in a problem, you must substitute in negative one and simplify. So let's do these three practice problems. So the first one, we're gonna find the square root of negative 25. Think of that as the square root of negative one times the square root of positive 25. Take the square root of negative one, which is i, and the square root of positive 25, which is five. So our answer is five i. i goes after the five, if, like, like you would a variable. For b, we're gonna find the square root of negative 72. So think of that as the square root of negative one times positive 72. You can break down the square root of 72 into the square root of 36 times the square root of two. The square root of 36 is six, the square root of negative one is i, and we cannot evenly take the square root of two. So that has to stay as it is. So that's our final answer. Now look over on the left of the screen for c. We've got negative five times the square root of negative nine. So the square root of negative nine would be three i, but I have to multiply that by that negative five that was out front. So our final answer is negative 15 i. Go to your pretest packet now and look at number one. See how you did on that problem. So we need to simplify <clears throat> two times the square root of negative 16 
plus the square root of 225. Notice that we need to give our answer in standard form, which is real number first, then imaginary. So first thing I need to do is take the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 16. So that is 4i multiplied by the 2 that was out front, which is 8i. The square root of 225 is 15. In standard form, this answer is C, 15 plus 8i. Now go back to your notes packet and let's work a few extra problems. So we need to simplify. We're just going to do what we're told. Notice that we have some subtraction, a subtraction in front of that um, parentheses. So that means we're going to think of that as negative 1 and we're going to distribute that negative 1. So we get negative 3 plus 6i plus 5 plus 3i minus 8i. Then combine your like terms. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2, 6i, 3i, and negative 8i is positive i. And we're going to write that in standard form. Now in our next problem, it's a multiplication problem. So I'm going to distribute first terms, outer, inner, and last. Notice my last term has an i squared in it, which is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to substitute in negative 1 and multiply times negative 16, so I get a positive 16. Then combining my like terms, I get a positive 4 plus 32i. Go back to your pretest and look at number 3, turn to number 3. We need to classify each function as either exponential, polynomial, or rational. Now keep your eyes on your review packet. I want you to review the um, functions that are given in that table and the equations. Familiarize yourself with the name of the function, their equations, and the graphs. And these are in parent forms. So on the test, you may not be given the parent function, the most basic, but you can look at the variation of it. All right, now look at the table um, that you have on the problem uh, number three. So the first one is f of x equals x cubed. That's a polynomial function a cubic function, then f of x equals 3x, that's linear, which we can also classify as polynomial. And then the next function is x plus 1 over x minus 3. Well, if you think of rational, we have the word ratio. So the only equation that has like a ratio or a fraction in it is that one. So that is a rational function. And then our first graph is a polynomial graph um, of a cubic. Our second graph is a graph of a rational function. It's called a hyperbola with the branches. And then our third graph, so I have drawn in our um, asymptote there, horizontal asymptote. Exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes. That's a um, line, a visible line that they approach. So our last graph is an exponential function. Okay, back to your note sheet. So review the information on function transformations in the equation. So it, you, if you're looking at the video, or obviously you are if you're just watching this, you can see that in red I have put um, our values, that parameters that can be added or subtracted um, or multiplied in the function. So just a review on what it looks like to have a vertical translation, a horizontal, a stretch or shrink, and then a reflection. All right, now go to number nine in your pretest packet. <clears throat> so it says all functions of the form f of x equals x to the n, where n is an integer. So this is just general math ease um, that is in general form. So if it helps you, you can put a number in there, like two or three. So f of x equals x squared, or x to the third power. Then it says the function transformations are listed in the first column, and then the transforms uh, functions are in the top row. So we need to select the box or boxes that match each function. So we can have one answer, no answer, or multiple answers. So we have to really be thinking. So in our first column, g of x equals negative x minus h. I could think of that as squared. 
So notice my negative out front. That is a reflection across the x-axis. Notice I have x minus the h value. So when that appears in an equation, it actually shifts the graph to the right. So we do not have a choice shifting it to the right. So my only choice is the reflection. In the second equation, we have a, a value that's being multiplied out front. So that's some kind of vertical dilation, which means a general word for stretch or compress. And then a k value that's being added. So when it's added, it's going to shift um, the function up. And then finally, I have an h value that is being added to my input. So that's going to shift it to the left. And then my k value is being subtracted, which shifts it down, but I don't have that choice. So these are the transformations that we see. Now turn to number 12. So here you're going to need to graph. A function is defined of f as f of x equals x squared. Three transformations are listed. So first of all, let's read through those transformations and write the equation that we're going to graph. So with our equation, we need to first of all shift it to uh, five units right. So I'm going to subtract five from my x, then a vertical stretch of two, so a multiplier of two out front, and then a reflection across the x-axis. So that's going to mean that my entire output is going to be multiplied by negative one. So I, my negative goes out front. Now I'm going to do the strategy from an earlier problem, making an xy table, picking out my vertex first, and then putting points around that. Now I'm going to graph those points, and as I graph them, I'm going to make sure that the graph that I see has been transformed the way it should be. So from the origin has been shifted 5 to the right, a vertical stretch of 2, and a reflection across the x-axis. All right, <clears throat> so in your notes packet, now review how to find an inverse function, method 1 and method 2. Go back to your pretest packet and look at number 17. So this question has two parts. So the first part is we need to find the inverse of the function f of x equals 1 half minus x. So go through the steps of finding the inverse, which means in an xy equation, you're going to exchange your x and y and then solve for y. So our new equation is 2x plus 12, which is choice D. Now my second one is what is the results when two functions are, these two functions are composed? So I'm going to take f of x and put it in, so, sorry, the inverse of f of x and put it into f of x. So you can see that I'm taking 2x plus 12 and plugging it into the f of x equation, and when I simplify, I get x. This will be the end of the part one video. Sorry about that. Um, continue on to part two to finish the rest of the review of this um, day one material.